does not get any worse than that. So, let's see what that bad boy is going to do. When I launch this, it's going to come up with an attack script crafter. My local host, which is my IP address, the target, the port, it sets everything up. I can set, I can actually tell it what operating system to try. I'm going to set it for Windows Service Pack 0 Universal, 2003, Universal. With a high vulnerability risk of 10, that tells me, if you read through the, um, uh, the notes of the NVD, um, a 10 is going to return you a shell. It's going to return you a command shell of that target. So I need to set up a reverse connection. And I want to see it's happening. Come on, don't make me look stupid. That's a good thing. Well, for me, it's a good thing. Because this tells me now that I have set a port at 3448 with that host. The payload was delivered. A reverse session was created. Okay, and the exploit was executed. Now, from here, I have an interpreter session. And what uh, a interpreter session is, is that is, I have set up a TCP um, tunnel between the two systems. Okay, and through that tunnel, I can hop through this port and do a lot of crafty things from that server service. Such as, and come up here, right click, I can go to the, to the interpreter session, I can interact by a command shell, desktop, VNC, I'll show you a couple different things that you can do with this, as an interpreter shell, I can browse files, I can look at running processes, I can do some other things which we're not going to get to in this lab, but let's just do a couple of really cool things here. All right. Um, let's go ahead and dump the hashes. What dumping hashes do is basically is I'm going to go into the shadow service of this session and I'm going to dump the password file from the Microsoft server. Okay, now this is why, you guys I'm sure have heard, your password needs to change on a regular basis. It's got to be so many characters long with capitals and, you know, special characters, yada, yada, yada. Okay, I'm going to show you what, um, uh, how I can do this, and I'm going to use the registry method because I know it is a uh, Microsoft system. All right, gather local and domain controller account passwords and hashes. This will dump local accounts from the SAM database. If the target host is a domain controller, it will dump the domain account database as well. Okay. Launches it, it connects to it, it grabs the file, and now I can do a couple of other things. So, let's just see here real quick. There's my password hashes. I got the administrator password. There's a KRBTG user, BR Brown user, J Doe, S Smile, Bro Bro, Mendrag. There's a lot of users that I dump. Okay? This is their password. This is the MD5 hash sub. Alright? So I'm gonna come back to that in just a second. So let's keep that in mind. I can also go back to the interpreter and go to interact and I can open up a command shell. Okay. And now I'm in the C colon backslash Windows System 32 um, directory.
drop away from previous command. That's being kind of finicky. There, I'm over the directory. And it looks like a 32, system 32 directory. I can go just to the uh, directory there, right? And uh, now that I'm in there, I can do just a couple really kind of cool things. First off, um, so, you, so I can show that you don't think I'm doing some sort of crazy magic trick. Why don't I just make a directory? So I created a directory called CIS467. It's right there. All right? Wasn't there before. It's there now. Okay? And we also have a couple of text files in there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, from here, if I wanted to, um, I also have administrative rights. So I could create a user, I can create different groups. If it was a domain um, uh, server, I could do all kinds of stuff in Active Directory, all kinds of fun stuff that I can do for the command line, right? If I know how to do those things. All right, to save a little bit of time, because I'm lazy, which is fine, all network engineers are inherently lazy. I can come up here, to find it, view, uh, oh, view credentials. So, I can come up here and actually uh, crack those passwords that I dumped from the hashes. <coughs> okay, so this brings up a tab under here that says credentials, and these are all the different users that, that it got. And from here, I can crack the password. This is a module that uses John the Ripper for um, identifying weak passwords from the hash dump. So hopefully somebody somewhere got really, really, really lazy. And dumping the passwords. Password hashes cracked five left. It'll keep working and working and working until it, it, it cracks all. So I'm gonna go back here to credentials. Looks so like you got B R Brown Cisco one two three four five J Doe password one two three S Smile target one two three. <coughs> Trying to tap to crack them until it gets all of them. So it'll it'll keep going and keep going and keep going until it cracks them. So, but in the meantime, in the meantime, all we have to do is I can either use my own host to RDP to that um, server or, or 
I can, um, through the interpreter session, set up an access through the desktop VNC. Okay, create a VNC bind TCP, TCP stagger. Um, so connect VNC viewer to one two seven. 001 display 5987 display 87. I need to write that down. That's pretty hard. I can't remember all those numbers. So that's fine. I'll make a little notepad here. So 127.0.0.1. Fifty nine eighty seven. You have to kind of understand how B and C works a little bit. So I'm going to click OK. And from here, I can go to under interaction. I haven't used this in a while, so pardon me. Alright, no problem. I am not a DNC expert, but I'm sure VNC viewer options host display number. It took me all of a few seconds to find. So, if I go back to here, go to my already waiting command shell, type in VNC viewer. options, which I don't have any options. Um, my host is my local host number, which is 127.0.0.1. session is actually looks like uh, our can just do display number maybe most then just 
phones with this play number. I have to play around with this a little bit. This play number was 87. Display number colon colon port number. So my display number was 87. because I already hit it. Anyway, you can play around with that a little bit. Test it here a little bit later. Or, I can go and go back to my interpreter session on my uh, command line session. Net user command. Add or delete user accounts with command line in Windows. Net space user, username, password, add. Pretty simple, right? But the trick is also adding them to the um, the right group, etc., 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 or I can just simply RDP to it. Try to find that user, one of those users. <coughs> Track the passwords too. So why don't I try BR Brown Cisco 12345?
JDO password123. You are required to change your password for login. Perfect. password has been changed. Your account has been disabled. Please see your system administrator. Obviously, I've had a little bit of fun with this in the past. Okay, but I think you guys kind of get the, uh, the direction. After this point, it's all about how much system administration knowledge you have. Can I create a, an account uh, via a command line, a few Google searches, and you're in script to help. Look like fun? Cool. You get to have fun with that for um, number five. So, for the last hour of the class, if you wouldn't mind setting that up to where you can at least get backtrack on your VM and maybe start, uh, I'll shut down this Windows 2003 server and I can give it to a couple of you guys and share it around and what have you. Uh, you can get started on that as well. Uh, let me go ahead and reset the uh, password on the user, on the admin user, to um, uh, password one two three four five. That way, you know what the password is before we get into the uh, the Windows two thousand three server. Any questions? Yes, sir. Can you go over um, how to get the VMnet uh, to be like not zero or? Sure. So how do you do that? <coughs> Is in VMware, if you go to the shell, and you right click and you go to settings, and then you select your network <coughs> card, your network adapter, right here. Custom and whatever VM net you want it on. Make sure both VMs are on the same VM net. But I think I remember, like, it didn't even show up as, like, VMX2 or anything. Are you using Workstation or Player? I was using the Workstation. Okay. I understand what you're saying. I understand exactly what you're saying. So, what you have to do is, if you're using Workstation, um, you can go to... VMware and your virtual network editor tool. <coughs> virtual network editor tool. Okay? And if you go into the virtual network editor tool, you can create VLANs, delete VLANs, set up their uh, our VM nets, I should say, which are nothing more than VLANs. Okay, so this is where I made VM net two, VM net three. I can add a network, call it, say, VMNet4. It'll assign a subnet to it, make it host only, bada bing. And you can edit it in here through the subnet IP range, DHCP settings. That's, that's how you create the VM Nets, okay? Through the VM Network Editor. If you need VM, VMware Workstation, there are keys on the announcement page of Blackboard. You go to VMware, download the uh, software, and use one of those keys. Okay, it'll give you, a, I think, a 30 or 60 day trial, which is more than enough for what you need now to this class. Uh, no, not on Blackboard. That's why I said you need to go to um... oh, Well, you can try it from home. <laughs> it might be a little bit faster. That's because you're over the wireless network. 
That's why it's taking so long. No, no, sorry. All right. So let me shut all this down. You can just exit out of Armitage. <coughs> System shut down. It shuts down in a second. Yeah, you can install it with that way. Too. That's fine. That's just your. Okay, the administrator password for this guy is password 12345 with capital P.